have uh, Eric Hatcher, and he's going to explain us about uh, solar query parsing. Thanks. I guess I should start with a poll. First of all, show of hands, how many people are using solar now? So hopefully a good portion of you, since this is going to be, you know, specifically about a slice of uh, a slice of solar, but not a, an intro to solar per se. Um, wow, it's good to see a, a big turnout here. Um, my name is Eric Hatcher. I'm a Lucene and solar committer. Um, I work for a company called LucidWorks. We support Lucene solar and, and, and so on, training and, and such. Um, so I'm going to talk about solar query parsing. Um, solar is a search engine that uh, uh, scales to big data and so on. Um, and in order to query it, of course, you have to be able to send in queries, you know, very much like a database where you have to send in a SQL query. But there's a lot of different types of ways that you can send queries into Solar. It's a very rich and uh, extensible uh, framework, basically, inside. Um, and of course, in order to find the data that you want, uh, you need to be able to uh, come up with the expressions uh, from your front end uh, and be able to send those into Solar to, you know, match the documents that you, that you care about there. Um, okay, so uh, we're going to talk about uh, basically the entire query parsing framework that's in Solar. Um, this is the definitive list of built-in query parsers. Uh, it looks a little funny here. Uh, you know, it's just copy and paste from the code. Um, I took all of those constants there where it says dot name and turned them actually just for the slide purposes to what they resolve to so that you can see those names. Uh, these names on the left side here um, are the key to the query parser. So uh, in order to address or to pick a certain query parser, you need to know that string uh, in order to, you know, to select that query parser to be in use. Um, the default query parser is what's called Lucene. Um, it's not uh, the Lucene query parser exactly, but it is the Lucene syntax. Uh, query parser. So uh, if you've used Lucene before, show of hands, people that use Lucene before Solar. All right, good. So if you're familiar with the, what's literally called query parser uh, class in Lucene, um, you're familiar with that syntax there. Um, and we'll go through uh, many of these uh, query parsers here so that you can see what these things do um, as they go. Um, uh, first, I'll talk about what's new in 4x here. Uh, there's a surround query parser. Uh, if you've used this underscore query underscore, I'll talk about that uh, in a bit. Uh, that's no longer necessary to have that underscore query underscore uh, silliness in there. And then there's a new query parser that just got committed two days ago called the switch query parser. And I'll show you an example of that in a bit as well. So first, the Lucene syntax query parser. Uh, the special thing about this above and beyond what the Lucene syntax offers is that it is field type aware. So in Solar you have a schema, your schema maps to your field names to field types, and those field types have different types of analysis on them and so on. So you need to be able to, uh, when you query for a particular term, it needs to know what that field type is uh, for the field that you're querying in order to do things with the range queries. Uh, if it's a date field, it will do date math. Um, if it's uh, numerics, you may, in, depending on the numeric field type, so this is where the field type awareness comes in, it needs to convert that numeric value into what the underlying index uh, value is in order to, uh, obviously, to, to match. Um, there's a few other bells and whistles in there in this Lucene query parser. Uh, reverse wildcard terms. So if you use this uh, filter called the reverse wildcard filter, uh, what that does is allows you to have uh, better performance on prefixed uh, queries. So if you say, uh, you know, search for star foo, uh, if I gave you a dictionary and said, find me all documents, uh, find me all words that match star foo, um, you would have to do an exhaustive search through that dictionary to do that. And the same thing happens in Lucene. So it can be a, a performance hit in order to uh, to, to match those. Um, there's this reverse wildcard filter as you're indexing the documents. So you just set this reverse wildcard filter on your index time uh, analysis chain in your schema field type definition. When you have that defined in your index time side, 
at query time, the Lucene query parser understands, uh, knows about that field type, knows that the it was reversed at index time, and if you search for star foo, it will reverse it and search for OOF star, uh, basically. Um, and so it was indexed in a reverse manner as well as in, in, in uh, forward order as well. So a, a few tricks like that that's in there. Um, the Lucene query parser syntax isn't really extensible uh, other than the field name. So you can say field name colon and then expression, um, either in prints or quotes or just a raw term with the field name uh, prefixed in front of it. Um, the Lucene query parser has two backdoor special field names, underscore val underscore and underscore query underscore. That underscore val underscore uh, maps to function queries. So in your Lucene query syntax, you can say and underscore val underscore colon and then give it a function query expression. Likewise, with the underscore query one, you can do that and then have a portal where you can uh, stick in a quoted expression, underscore query, underscore colon, in quotes put uh, another expression which selects a different query parser. And so you can use that for nested queries, and we'll talk about that in a second as well. Um, and the final feature that, this, that the Solar Lucene query parser uh, has available to it is this multi-term analysis. When you do queries at the Lucene level uh, with the Lucene query parser and so on, and you say uh, search for capital foo star, but when you indexed, you lowercased everything, um, the, by default, there's no analysis. There's nothing that happens to wildcard expressions, uh, you know, foo star or foo question mark bar, that kind of stuff. If you've got wildcard expressions in there or fuzzy expressions uh, with the tilde in there, um, there is no analysis done by default. Um, and that can be a drag because you don't really expect that uh, you, when you lowercase things at index time that when you, and, and you query for raw terms, it will lowercase. But when you uh, put in these regular expression uh, syntax or wildcard or fuzzy expressions in there, it doesn't know what to do with uh, those terms because how do you stem, for example, uh, foo star? Because you don't know whether they were doing uh, what, which word they were actually doing, so you don't know how to do stemming on it. But there is this feature called multi-term analysis where uh, for components uh, that are uh, implementing the multi-term aware component interface, these terms will, uh, these prefix, wildcard, regular expression, all these things will run through the multi-term aware components to lowercase and so on not stem, you wouldn't need to do stemming, but you at least need to do lowercasing to do the matching, for example, generally. So those are the, the bells and whistles of that Lucene query parser. The next query parser that, so the, the Lucene query parser, this is the default one. So if you say Q equals some expression, if you don't otherwise override which query parser you're using, this is the one you're gonna get. This is not necessarily user friendly because uh, if there's a syntax error in there, it basically gives a, a, a parse exception and uh, returns that back to the client and you get an error response back from Solar if your query expression is bogus. Um, so you need something that's more user friendly to be able to take stuff right from your search box and pass that right to Solar and kind of do the right thing. And so Dismax was developed for that purpose. Dismax allows you to do, and, and, and basically the syntax is very simple. It's exactly what you see there. You can do quoted phrases, you can do plus and minus, and you can just do, and, uh, and you can just do loose terms. Um, and that's it. That's all the syntax that you can do. It doesn't do wild cards, doesn't do uh, any other fancy stuff in there, just that. So it's quite suitable for you know, basic search boxes uh, and taking that input from the user and, and passing it through to Solar. Um, the, one of the main reasons people go to this dismax parser is because of the second bullet point here is that it spreads the query terms across multiple fields and allows you to weight different fields uh, with different weights. So you can uh, say, for example, a very common one is if you're indexing uh, just say articles where they have a title and a body text. Uh, generally you want query terms that match on the title 
to boost the re relevance of those documents higher than if the, the terms that the user searched for were in the body. Um, and so you can say title, caret, the caret character, uh, five, and then body, caret one, which is implicit, so you don't have to put the caret one. Um, and it will do, it will spread the query terms across those fields and, and do the boosting as you've specified. Um, and then you can see the dismax actually stands for disjunction maximum. So it disjoins the query terms across many fields, and then the score is the maximum produced by all the subqueries. Um, and you can play games with how much um, and and or is really factored in there. It doesn't do and and or explicitly, um, but with this mm parameter means minimum match, you can say if 50% uh, of the terms must match. Um, so it's kind of or uh, but still 50% of those terms must match. And you can do very elaborate expressions where you can say if there's less than five uh, terms in the uh, uh, query that, you know, three of them must match. If there's greater than five, then, uh, you know, 30% must match or something like that. So you can do a very sophisticated uh, expression to sp say um, how many should match given how many terms there are in the query expression itself. Uh, if there's some other things that you can do. Uh, uh, you can do additive boosts. Um, with uh, boosting query, so you can provide a, an additional query uh, that uh, when documents match that, it boosts the uh, relevancy. Or you can also provide a boosting function, say a function that says uh, boost more recent documents higher than older documents. Um, and it will use what's, what, an additive boost in there. And additive is, I, I, I'm calling that out because the next query parser we talk about can do the boosting query and the boosting function with additive, but there's also a way to do multiplicative, which is often more what people want in there. Um, so uh, first, let me, I, I wanna back up before we talk about that next query parser and show you the syntax that it takes to use these query parsers. So I've showed you the two, the default one, the Lucene one, and the dismax one, which uh, you know, is, is very commonly used. Um, now you need to kind of back up and look at the syntax that it takes to spell these things out. Uh, there is a parameter that you can define. You can do this in your request handler definition in solar config, or you can do it as a parameter on the request URL that you're sending into solar. And you specify def type, means default query parser type. I don't know why we made it such a silly name and started to just call it you know, query parser, but uh, it's called def type. Um, so that's one way that you can specify the query parser. Um, often you'll you know, spell that out in your solar config in your request handler definitions. Um, the next syntax that you can use is this curly bracket, bang, exclamation point syntax, where you say the parser name, and then you can specify local parameters. And then after the closing curly bracket, you put the expression. And there's different ways that you can do. You don't actually, the expression can be nested as one of the parameters as well, like this bottom example. But all of those expressions there are equivalent. Um, Q equals ApacheCon NA uh, 2013. And then I'm setting def type to dismax, uh, minimum match to two, and the query fields is set to the name field. And I could, this is where I'd specify multiple fields if I wanted to have uh, boosting across different fields. Um, and this next one um, simply puts the uh, specification of the query parser itself inside this curly bracket bang syntax um, all together that way instead of separate parameters. And then the final uh, example here, uses, instead of the query expression living outside of the curly brackets, it's now the V parameter that's in there. Um, Okay, so that's, that's how you spell out query parsers, different ways to do this stuff, so maybe slightly confusing, um, and we'll see you know, many examples down the line here. The next feature of solar query parsing is what's called local parameter substitution. This is the ability to dereference a separate parameter um, and inject that into one of these uh, main parameters. Um, I'm showing this example in a more realistic way where you would define um, basically the query that is parameterized with these local parameter substitutions in a solar config uh, set up this way. So I'm defining a request handler and I've defined it as slash document. 
the idea here is that I want to be able to have one request handler where I can just say slash document, question mark, ID equals, and then the unique ID of the uh, document itself. Now, uh, you know, in, uh, you could simply say, you know, slash select Q equals uh, ID colon and then the ID. You could do that. Um, doesn't look as clean in your logs. Um, if you have special characters in your ID, colons, for example, ID colon something colon something else doesn't really work well. The parser is going to uh, 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 be mad at you for that. You can backslash escape these special characters and so on. So there's a lot of kind of special ways you can do this. Uh, this is just a, a neat trick here where I can say, I'm going to use the term query parser on the field ID, F equals ID, and then I'm going to uh, substitute in dollar sign ID. So that takes the request parameter ID and injects it into the value of the term query parser there. So it, at the Lucene level, if you're familiar with that, it's simply doing a term query for ID and the value. And so that's how that works. And I just spelled out some extra components in here because you might want to do highlighting, for example, where you could say ID equals 13, and then you can say hl.q equals, and then give it a query, and it'll highlight the query terms in the document that gets returned as well. So uh, just kind of a, a neat little bonus uh, there. And I'm leveraging the trick with uh, request handler definitions here to spell out invariance, meaning that there's no way that a um, that the request coming into solar can override what the queue parameter is or the rows. You will always only get one or zero documents back from that query. Um, okay, so that's local parameter substitution. Next up is nested query parsing. This is leveraging that underscore query underscore trick that's in um, the Lucene query parser. Uh, allowing you to have basically a back door to uh, parse a different uh, expression with a different query parser, and then you can and and or those things together using the Lucene syntax. And uh, again, it, since solar4.x, I think that underscore query thing is not necessary anymore. You can just spell out the, the curly bracket stuff. Um, and uh, so this is an example where we are taking, say, an advanced search where we have two different boxes that people are putting in here. I have user query and topic. It could be, you know, keywords and author. Um, and you're spreading, uh, using a dismax on one field and then a dismax on another field or a set of fields and a set of fields and then anding those things and having different boosts for each one of those expressions there. So you can really do some... Uh, crazy advanced search type stuff there. Uh, Stanford University uh, is, uh, I, I'm buddies with a lot of people that work there. They've done some very interesting things on their advanced search page for their library search where they've got many, many uh, boxes there uh, where you can put in refined searches and uh, they use this dismax uh, nested query thing because they have, if you're familiar with library data, books can have, you know, it's not just a title of a book. Books can have a title, a subtitle, an alternate title. They can have a main author, a uh, secondary author, and so on. Many fields for each one of those boxes. Uh, so when you type something into the author box, it's actually spreading it across many author fields. Okay, so next up is this edismax, extended dismax. Extended dismax is dismax plus Lucene syntax. So many people are now are, are using this as their main uh, query parser because it allows for wildcard expressions, um, ands and ors and fuzzy queries and, and, and all that kind of stuff. But you also benefit from the dismax capabilities there of being able to specify many fields and spreading the terms across many fields. If you're not using fielded syntax and so on in there. So it's, it's a pretty nice parser here. It's got m several other additional capabilities that the dismax doesn't have. Being able to uh, limit which fields can be searched. Maybe you have a cost field where you wouldn't want the end user to be able to search on the cost field, for example, um, and so on. And you can do the shingling stuff to um, improve uh, relevancy when multiple terms um, match a particular field. Um, 
and so on. So, and, and there's some stop word magic that's in there. Uh, when it makes phrase queries, it can remove uh, stop words from that. It's got a boost parameter, which is on top of it. It also supports BF and BQ, the boost function and boost query parameters that Dismax has, but it's got the multiplicative boost uh, parameter as well. Um, and you know, just a bunch of other kind of parameters that are there uh, to control to refine um, this stuff. And in fact, I've seen some commits lately where it fixed, there's some odd issues in there. There's where a trailing minus sign caused errors and, and so on because it thinks that's special syntax. So some things have been fixed in this as recently as uh, yesterday. So uh, pretty fancy query parser there. Just kind of going through all of the other query parsers that are there. This term query parser is a useful one. Um, in that uh, it allows you to specify an exact term for uh, a field and not have to worry about all of this other, even though this is a query parser itself, um, it's kind of lightweight in that all the Q parser does is generate a Lucene query object. Um, you don't need to do any fancy escaping. If you're using Lucene query syntax and you're trying to do a query like this where you said, you know, uh, Q equals facet underscore field colon, and then that crazy value there with a colon and a smiley face and so on in there. Um, you would have to backslash escape the colon and uh, both of those colons and, 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 and maybe surround it by quotes to get that thing to work because the query parser, you know, splits at white space and so on. So the nice thing about this term query parser is it eliminates the, all of that escaping nastiness that you have to deal with um, and just uses uh, uh, basically a, a raw term query at the, at the, at the uh, very final parsing step here. Okay, so term query, again, useful. We saw that in the um, local parameter substitution uh, slide uh, a few back. There's also a prefix query parser. Uh, the prefix query parser um, simply basically adds a star at the end of the query and makes it into a uh, uh, what's called a prefix query as far as Lucene's concerned. Um, I, I don't really have a, a use case where this would be handy per se versus just using you know standard Lucene query syntax for this. Um, and there is a, a note there that it, it doesn't do the multi-term stuff. So if you did lowercase at index time and then you did a capital foo, uh, there for the prefix value, uh, it wouldn't lowercase um, there, so uh, kind of an issue. There's a boost query parser. The boost query parser is multiplicative to the score of the nested query that uh, you're using, and you can use any query parser that you want for that nested query. And so you simply just say boost uh, query parser b equals and, and a function query, and that's it. And then give it a, a nested query. Um, the edis max boost um, parameter, if that's specified, basically this is, it uses this query parser under the covers and wraps uh, the main query. So this one's, this one's quite handy. There is a field query parser. Um, this one uh, does um, field type awareness in that it will, again, run through the analysis um, if that's a, um, a text field. Uh, and it will basically look at the schema and figure out what the field type is and come up with um, a query for the expression that you had based on the field type. Um, and you can see there's a number of cases here, if it's a text field, uh, which type of query does it actually generate under the covers? And it really depends on how many tokens come out of the analysis process um, and what positions those things are in in order to figure out the right query to leverage there. And you can see there's also some special handling for uh, certain field types there. If you have a, a location field type, a lat long maybe, um, you can just simply specify that and it will create the right type of query under the covers for that. So the, again, this, this, was a, this is a handy one as well. There's a surround query parser. Uh, this came in 4.0, it's not in the 3x uh, versions. 
this is kind of a niche one, although the ultimate idea of this one needs to really come out in other ways, but um, uh, this generates what's called span queries. At the Lucene level, a span query is a proximity query that can do more sophisticated things than, say, a phrase query. A phrase query will match you know, term beside term, within distance, maybe order doesn't matter of those terms. Um, whereas a span query can take, do that, but also say this phrase must be within 10 words of this other phrase, and this other term can't be in the middle. Um, for example, maybe you have special, some people use special terms that are end of sentence boundaries or end of paragraph boundaries, and you want to match this phrase near this other phrase where there can't be a paragraph break in the middle. Um, so, you know, that would require special analysis in there to, to put those extra tokens in there, but that's the kind of thing people have done uh, with these span queries, very sophisticated proximity uh, operations. Um, the surround query parser has its own kind of funky syntax where um, it's got this, uh, these operators in and W, and so you can do uh, the query expressions like this bottom one here where I'm saying Apache star, so it does wildcards as well, and within four words of the word Portland. Um, and you can do ordered or unordered and so on. It does um, uh, wildcards, fuzzy, uh, regular expressions, and so on. So um, it's quite rich that way. Now there is one important note here about the surround query parser, it does not do analysis, so it is not field type aware. If you are lower casing when you index, the query that you send in needs to be lower cased. So uh, again, quite niche, but if you need to do sophisticated uh, matching uh, with proximity, this is the one for you here. Um, and the fact that it does wildcards um, actually makes that analysis stuff, and that's, this is the reason that it wasn't really built from the ground up to be field type aware, is the use cases a lot of people are doing, often just doing uh, kind of prefix queries, wildcard queries. So you don't need to do stimming and all that if you just search for foo star near these other things, um, as long as you're using these wildcards on there. There's a join query parser. The join query parser um, is not quite a SQL join, but does allow you to uh, connect the dots between um, one type of document or even the same type of document to uh, another set of documents by having an inner expression that basically comes up with a list of terms or a list of IDs, and then that list of IDs that match that inner one um, is then used to uh, filter uh, on the outer join query, basically, there. Um, you can join across documents in the same index. So you could index um, different types of documents in the same uh, solar uh, core and join across them. And you could have, you know, say, a document type uh, uh, field that distinguishes which type there are. Um, and you could kind of have a primary key, foreign key relationship in there. You can also do joins across solar cores. Uh, the cores have to, the constraint here is the cores have to be on the same solar instance. They can't be remote. Um, but that actually adds some very uh, interesting power to be able to join across cores in that you could have one core that is uh, documents, another core is maybe security information about those documents, who can access those documents. The access information churns more uh, and is smaller than the corpus of the full text documents that you're searching. And so you can uh, commit, change, and, and do all this stuff quicker on, the, on, a small, on a separate core that's just security information and then join across them um, if, when needed, for example. Um, and, and Yannick, the creator of Solar, actually has done some uh, good presentations about this. So there's a pointer there to some of his stuff. There's a number of spatial query parsers, being able to do geohash, lat long, point type uh, querying, um, where you can uh, filter on exact distance. You can do um, bounding box and radial type uh, searches there. And um, range queries, you can see the range query syntax here where you're doing lat long, two lat long, basically coming up with a bounding box uh, for geo queries. 
and so on. So there's some pretty cool uh, geo capabilities in there. Um, and I'm down here, just in, in conjunction with uh, the geo queries, often people want to sort by distance, uh, which you could sort by uh, a function query here. Um, or you may want to return that distance uh, in the results. And this is a new feature in Solar 4, being able to do uh, these pseudo fields basically here, where I say underscore dist underscore colon geodist. And so I get a field back in my document response that has the distance computed and put into each document's uh, response, basically. Uh, there's a function range uh, query. Um, this one's a pretty, uh, pretty powerful one. We'll see a little bit more about this one in a second when we talk about post filtering. Um, so, uh, you know, just depending on what you need to do there, but you get the idea with functions there. And this is one of the final query parsers we're talking about, maybe the final one. Um, this is the brand new switch query parser. Um, it's a little bit, uh, I'm, I'm, judgment's still out for me on this one, uh, whether I like it or not, but um, it, what, what you see is what you get here. Basically, you can do a, a switch query parser and uh, you can provide a, a, a parameter that fills in where it says V equals dollar in stock. Uh, you can imagine this top portion, that FQ portion, being uh, embedded in your solar config. So you've got this filter query already there. It's parameterized. And from your client, all you need to do is send in uh, the value to fill in the blanks for that switch. And when you say in stock equals yes here, um, then it picks the yes option out of this case. And uses the filter in stock colon true, which is a Lucene query parser syntax query there. Um, this one's not so, um, this example here is more like that slash document one that I provided where it's, it's fairly straightforward. In fact, this one's even more straightforward where I could use that term query one and simply pass in true or false and have it substitute into a query like we saw before. Um, but you could imagine having one that says, um, uh, case uh, yesterday, case today, case forever, and um, you pass in, you know, you just want documents from yesterday, and it uses a date math expression for case.yesterday uh, that, you know, narrows down to now minus one day to, to now, basically, um, and so on. So uh, there, there are some interesting things that you could do there um, that aren't so uh, kind of silly examples like that. This just got committed like two days ago. So this is, gonna, this is on the 4X branch. It will be in 4.2, not in 4.1. Uh, post filter. This is um, a way to implement an interface on a query object, a, a query class. And uh, what happens at the end of doing the query filtering and the, 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 the filtering of getting the document result set from the Q and the FQ parameters, the query and the filter query parameters, there's one more pass that can go through uh, to eliminate documents from the result. Uh, and this is called the post filter. Uh, the reason you need this post filtering thing is that you may have filters that are uh, very expensive to compute. So you want to compute those on the most minimal document set possible. If you are doing, for example, ACL filtering, and you want to say, only uh, give me documents that I have permission to see. If I have to um, uh, compute for every document in my billion document index, all of the documents that I can see first, you know, then I'm doing a billion computations of access control list. Whereas with um, post filtering, it's only going to narrow down to all the documents that, uh, for that main result set. Uh, there's a couple of really nice blog entries there. Well, one of them's really nice, the other one I wrote, but actually both of them are uh, very useful there um, about how this post filter stuff works. So uh, good stuff there. There are a couple of, a few built in uh, queries that, that do this automatically, um, but if you're going to do like security stuff, I, I wrote this last blog entry there, uh, you have to write cust some custom code and then write your own QParser plugin and then it plugs right into Solar this way. Um, 
more on query parsing here. This is more kind of a best practice or a way to use these things. If you're going to do fuzzier type matching where you need uh, phonetics, stemming, um, or synonym injection, uh, you can um, do this in different ways. And one of the techniques that people uh, have often used is to come up with parallel fields. You copy field, this is a schema uh, directive, copy field say, in this example, name, to name underscore phonetic, where the name field is simply, you know, basically analyzed, and the name phonetic field has a phonetic filter built into it. And then you can, you know, boost documents that are exact matches to the user's query over ones that are, you know, are phonetically similar. Um, so you can put these types of boosting expressions in there. So it's just using the dismax query parser here uh, and spreading across different fields. So this is really just a technique for um, using query parsers to, you know, boost across exact and inexact matches. Um, another technique I wanted to talk about here is when we're doing suggest interfaces. You know, this is the query box, the modern query box where you're typing in and suggestions are popping up as you're typing. Um, there's ways in Lucene and Solar to do this suggest right from the main index where you can suggest terms from uh, your full text fields and, uh, and see those terms. And there's techniques to have a light analysis so you're not suggesting stems or or uh, other funky types of uh, uh, things that happen during the analysis process. Um, but let's flip it around a little bit. Rather than trying to do suggestions from uh, one index where it's a little bit of an awkward fit, uh, let's talk about doing suggestions. Let's think about doing suggestions from a separate index. And the example here is, uh, and I've worked with a customer that had this exact use case here, where they're selling automobile parts. And they need to have that suggest in there. So as you're typing, it's suggesting vehicles, 1987 Chevrolet Corvette. And it needs to pick the right one as you're typing there. Um, you could index parts, and it's actually quite hard to uh, uh, you know, put all of the vehicles that a part belongs to on a part. Um, so have a separate index where um, you have uh, the vehicles and their make, model, year, and so on in that index, and you query that index for suggest rather than um, trying to shoehorn suggest into uh, an index where it doesn't quite fit. So uh, consider that as, a, as something to think about as you're building these suggest things, that maybe you want to suggest, use a real index and a real query uh, for those suggests and not use maybe the, the built-in suggest stuff out of solar there. Um, and, you know, basically, finally here, relevancy, certainly the query that you provide is uh, basically the formula that's used to compute the score, the relevancy score, uh, of each one of the documents returned, matching as well as the score of that document. So you're going to have to figure out how to use uh, query parsers and, and do the tuning. Every application that you're building out there is different, has different needs. Some people don't care about this kind of stuff. Um, other people are very hypersensitive to this sort of stuff um, and need to, um, uh, you know, have uh, corpuses with tests and, and anytime uh, one of these knobs and dials changes that you have to uh, basically run tests and, and make sure that documents that you think should match certain queries still match that query, still appear in the top list and so on. So um, tools are, there's tools that have kind of been posted out there in the open source recently. Um, we're building uh, a relevancy workbench into our product as well. Um, so we're getting more and more tooling out there for this sort of stuff. Um, kind of down to the wire here for, in terms of time, so I'll be kind of quick here. Uh, there's debugging capabilities in there. There's an analysis uh, request handler where you can send in text and get back out uh, the positional information and what comes out of the analyzer there. Uh, there's debug options. You can see the complete debug expression um, uh, for the query, the raw query, and then the, uh, the parsed query and so on. So you can see what happens to the query parser there. And then you can get relevancy um, 
uh, results there too and see the, the raw leucine uh, score explanation there. Why did this document get the numerical score that it got? Uh, because the field appeared this many times, the term appeared this many times in the field, the document had, this many documents had that term, and the field weights are this, and the boosts are this. It gives you the very complicated uh, explanation back. Um, and I'll just wrap up here with a little bit about the future of solar query parsing. Uh, there is a, now a patch out there, not committed yet, uh, but a prototype patch for JSON query parsing. Um, and then there's an XML query parser that I've been working on. Um, and then there's also a payload term query parser. And there's a little bit about each one of these here. Um, and these just leverage the Q parser framework. So those names there are the names of those Q parsers that we already saw. Um, there's an XML query parser, um, still a work in progress on this one. All, all three of these work in progress, basically. They're all patches that are sitting out there. And then, you know, this one is more niche here. Maybe you want to do boosting on bold words within a text, the payload stuff, um, something that's not supported yet, but uh, may very well be in the near future. And even fancier here is this block join query, being able to uh, do hierarchical type things. This one is more about uh, indexing properly. Solar doesn't support yet the block join um, indexing capabilities, but when it does, we'll need a query that can leverage that so that you can do uh, two child and two parent type uh, queries there. And that's, uh, that's all I got. Timing worked out pretty well. Thanks. Couple of questions. Yeah. Any questions? We have time for a question or two. So thanks very much anyway. Um so I mean with with every technology people are pushing the boundaries. So specifically with the query parsing, what's going on just now in the solar community that's just, you know, pushing it pushing it to the maximum? Um you, you I know you've discussed a lot about, you know, the various bits and pieces that's out there, but with special regards to development, the patches, and the way that the, co the community is, I mean, it's moving 100 miles an hour. So, I mean, what's, what's really pushing it with regards to even maybe some uh, um, real world applications and, and, you know, what your guys' customers are doing, et cetera, to, to really get some good performance from, from the query parsing side of things? Uh, good performance. I mean, really, it boils down to the complexity of the queries and being able to, uh, you know, especially if you're using dismax, some people get really carried away and try to dismax across, you know, dozens of fields. And then if you've got a query that's got, you know, a dozen terms in it times a dozen fields, it becomes an extremely large, complex query, especially if you turn on some of the other bells and whistles with dismax. So, uh, you know, reducing the number of fields, maybe that means having some copy fields that merge fields together. It's been a very common technique. You know, you've got title and body. If you don't care about the the relevancy of certain things, then you can just blend all the fields together uh, and simplify the query expressions. So that's just one thing that we've, we encounter. All right, well, thank you very much. Oh, one more question. Sure. Uh, first one, basically, uh, this one is uh, in the, like a big data section. I was wondering, all these uh, parsers um, do you get the data like a big data? What kind of storage? It's yeah, limited? sure. I mean, these queries work uh, in solar. There's now Solar Cloud, which is uh, basically a set of technologies to scale solar into big data. Basically, having a cluster of solar servers where, I mean, we have customers that are in the several billion document uh, situation now, and so they have a cluster of you know tens to hundreds of servers. Uh, the queries will spread across that entire cluster and aggregate the document back. So absolutely, all of these queries work in, in solar cloud mode. Oh. Yeah. Okay, th next question. I think uh, you, you talk about the uh, different parsers and uh, uh, my concern is uh, you, you basically you have, when you first, uh, you prepare the data, you, you index your data, right? So for example, you index data this way and then in the future you, you want to run Uh, well, I mean, the, the the simple answer, but not necessarily easy answer, is you have to re-index. And that's, you know, often the case if you start changing around how terms are analyzed and so on, you just simply have to re-index. Oh, okay. um, now, you can get fancier with regular expressions and so on. So, you, you know, you could index in a very basic way. Right. 
right. and still query in very sophisticated ways, but maybe less performant. So you could just simply white space tokenize and lowercase all your text. Um, and then if you need to do kind of pattern matching or you know, right. kind of stimming or something like that, you, know, you can do um, regular expressions. Oh, okay, so, so, so it, it's possible you, 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 you build your database and you, later you realize you, you can run, you want to run some uh, search, but it doesn't work, right? You, you have to review it or something. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah. Th thank you. Thanks, everybody. And also, I'll just one more note. There, there's, a, there's a meet up tonight for Lucene and Solar. Yep. So there's a meet up tonight at 8 o'clock. Uh, so let's uh, uh, come, come out tonight and uh, let's talk some more Lucene and Solar. <laughs>